The trihydrogen cation, also known as protonated molecular hydrogen or H3+, is one of the most abundant ions in the universe. It is stable in the interstellar medium due to the low temperature and low density of interstellar space. The role that H3 plus plays in the gas phase chemistry of the ism is unparalleled by any other molecular ion. The cation is also the simplest triatomic molecule, since its two electrons are the only valence electrons in the system. It is also the simplest example of a three-center two-electron bond system. History H3 plus was first discovered by J.J. Thomson in 1911. While studying the resultant species of plasma discharges, he discovered something very odd. Using an early form of mass spectrometry, he discovered a large abundance of a molecular ion with a mass-to-charge ratio of 3. He stated that the only two possibilities were C4 plus or H3 plus. Since C4 plus would be very unlikely and the signal grew stronger in pure hydrogen gas, he correctly assigned the species as H3 plus. The formation pathway was discovered by Hognes and Lund in 1925. They also used an early form of mass spectrometry to study hydrogen discharges. They found that as the pressure of hydrogen increased, the amount of H3 plus increased linearly and the amount of H2 plus decreased linearly. In addition, there was little H plus at any pressure. This data suggested the proton exchange formation pathway discussed below. In 1961, Martin al. First suggested that H3 plus may be present in interstellar space given the large amount of hydrogen in interstellar space and its reaction pathway was exothermic. This led to the suggestion of Watson and Herbst and Klemperer in 1973 that H3 plus is responsible for the formation of many observed molecular ions. It was not until 1980 that the first spectrum of H3 plus was discovered by Takeshi Oka, which was of the new two fundamental band using a technique called frequency modulation detection. This started the search for interstellar H3 plus. Emission lines were detected in the late 1980s and early 1990s in the ionospheres of Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. In 1996, H3 plus was finally detected in the interstellar medium by Gebal and Oka in two molecular interstellar clouds in the sight lines GL2136 and W33A. In 1998, H3 plus was unexpectedly detected by Macaw Leal in a diffuse interstellar cloud in the sight line Cygnus OB2 No. 12. In 2006 Oka announced that H3 plus was ubiquitous in interstellar medium, and that the central molecular zone contained a million times the concentration of ism generally. Structure The arrangement of the hydrogen atoms in the molecule is an equilateral triangle. The molecule has a resonance structure which represents a three-center, two-electron bond. The strength of the bond has been calculated to be around 4.5 electron volts. This molecule is a good example which illustrates the importance of electron pair delocalization which contributes to the stability of molecules. Formation The main pathway for the production of H3 plus is by the reaction of H2 plus and H2. H2 plus plus H2 H3 plus plus H The concentration of H2 plus is what limits the rate of this reaction. H2 plus can only be produced in interstellar space by the ionization of H2 by a cosmic ray. H2 plus cosmic ray H2 plus plus E minus plus cosmic ray However, the cosmic ray has so much energy. It is almost unaffected by the relatively small energy required to ionize an H2 molecule. In interstellar clouds, cosmic rays leave behind a trail of H2+, and therefore H3+. Destruction The information for this section was also from a paper by Eric Herbst. There are many destruction reactions for H3+. The dominant destruction pathway in dense interstellar clouds is by proton transfer with a neutral collision partner. 
The most likely candidate for a destructive collision partner is the second most abundant molecule in space, CO. H3 plus plus COH CO plus plus H2 The significant products of this reaction is HCO plus, an important molecule for interstellar chemistry. Its strong dipole and high abundance make it easily detectable by radio astronomy. H3 plus can also react with atomic oxygen to form O plus and H2. H3 plus plus OO plus plus H2O plus then usually reacts with more H2 to create further hydrogenated molecules. O plus plus H2OH2 plus plus HOH2 plus plus H2OH3 plus plus H. At this point, the reaction between OH3 plus and H2 is no longer exothermic in interstellar clouds. The most common destruction pathway for OH3 plus is dissociative recombination, yielding four possible sets of products. H2O plus H, O plus H2, O plus 2H, and O plus H2 plus H. While water is a possible product of this reaction, it is not a very efficient product. Different experiments have suggested that water is created anywhere from 5 to 33% of the time. Water formation on grains is still considered the primary source of water in the interstellar medium. The most common destruction pathway of H3 plus in diffuse interstellar clouds is dissociative recombination. This reaction has multiple products. The major product is dissociation into three hydrogen atoms, which occurs roughly 75% of the time. The minor product is H2 and H, which occurs roughly 25% of the time. Ortho, para H3 plus. The most abundant molecule in dense interstellar clouds is H2. When an H3 plus molecule collides with H2, stoichiometrically there is no net yield. However, a proton transfer still can take place, which can potentially change the total nuclear spin of the two molecules depending on the nuclear spins of the protons. Two different spin configurations for H3 plus are possible, called ortho and para. Ortho H3 plus has all three proton spins parallel, yielding a total nuclear spin of three halves. Para H3 plus has two proton spins parallel while the other is anti-parallel, yielding a total nuclear spin of one half. Similarly, H2 also has ortho and para states, with ortho H2 having a total nuclear spin 1 and para H2 having a total nuclear spin of 0. When an ortho H3 plus and a para H2 collide, the transferred proton changes the total spins of the molecules yielding instead a para H3 plus and an ortho H2. Spectroscopy The spectroscopy of H3 plus is challenging. Due to its lack of a permanent dipole moment, pure rotational spectroscopy of H3 plus is impossible. Ultraviolet light is too energetic and would dissociate the molecule. Rovibronic spectroscopy provides the ability to observe H3 plus. Rovibronic spectroscopy is possible with H3 plus because one of the vibrational modes of H3 plus, the new to asymmetric bend mode, has a weak dipole moment. Since Zucker's initial spectrum, over 900 absorption lines have been detected in the infrared region. H3 plus emission lines have also been found by observing the atmospheres of the Jovian planets. H3 plus emission lines are found by observing molecular hydrogen and finding a line that cannot be attributed to molecular hydrogen. Astronomical detection H3 plus has been detected in two types of celestial environments. Jovian planets and interstellar clouds. In Jovian planets, it has been detected in the planet's ionospheres, the region where the sun's high-energy radiation ionizes the particles in the atmosphere. Since there is a high level of H2 in these atmospheres, this radiation can produce a significant amount of H3+. Also, with a broadband source like the sun, there is plenty of radiation to pump the H3 plus to higher energy states from which it can relax by stimulated and spontaneous emission. 
planetary atmospheres the detection of the first H3 plus emission lines was reported in 1989 by Drossart et al. found in the ionosphere of Jupiter. Drossart found a total of 23 H3 plus lines with a column density of 1.39 times 109 per square centimeters. Using these lines, they were able to assign a temperature of the H3 plus of tilde 1100 K, which is comparable to temperatures determined from emission lines of other species like H2. In 1993, H3 plus was found in Saturn by Gebel al and in Uranus by Trafton al. Molecular interstellar clouds H3 plus was not detected in the interstellar medium until 1996, when Gebel and Oka reported the detection of H3 plus in two molecular cloud sight lines, GL2136 and W33A. Both sources had temperatures of H3 plus of about 35 K and column densities of about 1014 per square centimeters. Since then, H3 plus has been detected in numerous other molecular cloud sight lines, such as AFGL 2136, MONAR 2 IRS 3, GCS 3 2, GCIRS 3, and LKH Alpha 101. Diffuse interstellar clouds unexpectedly, three H3 plus lines were detected in 1998 by McCaw Leal, in the diffuse cloud sight line of CEYGOB2 No. 12. Before 1998, the density of H2 was thought to be too low to produce a detectable amount of H3 plus. McCall detected a temperature of tilde 27 K and a column density of tilde 1014 per square centimeters, the same column density as Gebel and Oka. Since then, H3 plus has been detected in many other diffuse cloud sight lines, such as GCS 3 2, GCIRS 3, and Zeta per se. Steady state model predictions to approximate the path length of H3 plus in these clouds. Oka used the steady state model to determine the predicted number densities in diffuse and dense clouds. As explained above, both diffuse and dense clouds have the same formation mechanism for H3+, but different dominating destruction mechanisms. In dense clouds, proton transfer with CO is the dominating destruction mechanism. This corresponds to a predicted number density of 10 minus 4 cm minus 3 in dense clouds. N equals N N 10 minus 4 per cc N equals N N 10 minus 6 per cc in diffuse clouds. The dominating destruction mechanism is dissociative recombination. This corresponds to a predicted number density of 10 minus 6 per cc in diffuse clouds. Therefore, since column densities for diffuse and dense clouds are roughly the same order of magnitude, diffuse clouds must have a path length 100 times greater than that for dense clouds. Therefore, by using H3 plus as a probe of these clouds, their relative sizes can be determined.